Here's the, uh, again, last presentation, Mr. Sam Ash, he's the CEO of Bunker Hill. And as the name says, they uh, have the old Bunker Hill mine in Idaho, Idaho, USA, and Sam will go cover the story. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to speak with everyone today. And, uh, you know, just real quickly, I want to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the, the company and what we're looking to do. And... You know, we're an ex-Barrick team. Our executive chairman, Richard William, was the former chief operating officer at Barrick. Uh, I worked for Barrick as well. I ran the Lamuana Copper Mine, uh, as well as uh, Brad Barnett. And uh, David Weens came to us from SSR Mining. And what we're really looking to do is build a multi-asset uh, mining company focused on delivering metals that are important for the low carbon energy transition, but also have a, um, a precious component that comes along with it. And when we look, went to look for opportunities after we had uh, left Barrick, we were really looking for a few key things. One, uh, something that could be uh, really a, a world-class mineral endowment and mineral potential, something that had the opportunity to be long life. In our case, we're looking at uh, you know, multi-decade potential and uh, something that could operate in the lowest quartile of the cost curve and, and be sustainable through the full commodity cycle. Um, the challenge is that deposits that meet those criteria are uh, usually owned and operated and in operation. So we were also looking for assets that uh, w were distressed. Uh, and and, and uh, with the team we have operationally focused with a track record of operational turnaround, we felt that that uh, distressed asset uh, provided us with the opportunity to create you know, significant value. Um, and we found just the asset we were looking for in, uh, in the Bunker Hill mine. Bunker Hill. It was a mine that is absolutely iconic in the mining history of the United States, operated continuously for 100 years in the Silver Valley of northern Idaho, produced 165 million ounces of silver over that 100-year period, along with 5 million tons of base metal. Uh, it's most definitely a polymetallic deposit, lead, zinc, and silver. Um, and uh, in that 100-year operating life really was the genesis of the point of distress that uh, that uh, drove the, uh, the mine into closure in the 1980s. Uh, operating with little to no uh, environmental regulation and oversight resulted in what could only be characterized as an environmental disaster in the Silver Valley. Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, stepped in and has spent the last 40 years cleaning up and rehabilitating the, uh, the environment. In 2017, there was a consent decree reached which set settled all of the historic environmental liability, really setting the stage for the uh, Bunker Hill mine to again be looked at in advance towards uh, productive economic activity. Our team joined what was essentially a, a dormant company in April of 2020 and, uh, and really looked at uh, the, the uh, opportunity that presented itself. At that time, the company uh, really only had a lease with an option to purchase the asset um, and, uh, and no 43101 compliant resource, but certainly uh, had the underlying mineral potential. And uh, since April of 2020, we've really focused on a couple of key areas. One is to advance the project technically. What that meant was to do the drilling, do the uh, geology work, um, to really validate, publish, and, can, and progressively update a 43101 compliant resource along with the technical studies that uh, demonstrated the e economic potential of the site. As well, work, we uh, focused on working with our key stakeholders, in this case, you know, the local community, but also the uh, Environmental Protection Agency and the, and the State of Idaho Regulatory Authority to make sure that we were advancing the project in, in a way that, uh, you know, that, that met the, um, you know, the environmental uh, constraints and considerations associated with the site. Um, in December of last year, there was really kind of a key milestone event uh, that uh, resulted in us uh, making acquisition of the mine, reaching a modified settlement agreement with the EPA, and that was the, uh, the funding that uh, we uh, were able to put in place with Sprott Royalty and Streaming. And that has really uh, been the catalyst for the pr progress on the property this year. Uh, where we're now at the stage where we are looking to enter into and accelerate the, uh, the, per, the, the, uh, the building of the mine and re-entering into production. So from a resource base, 
We now carry on the book 7 million tons of, of measured and indicated material, 8.2% uh, zinc equivalent. Uh, silver is, is a, a somewhat minor component, uh, one ounce per ton, and uh, more. And, and as you can see, it's most definitely at this stage, uh, the dominant driver is zinc. Uh, the mineralization uh, occurred in two mineraliza mineralizing events. The first one is a zinc dominant mineralizing event. The second one was a, a more traditional mineralization that you see in the Silver Valley, which is a more silver dominant lead mineralization. Um, and, and we certainly, the, although the restart is focused on the more zinc dominant mineralization, that's, that's uh, primarily a result of the uh, access and the ability to move into production uh, more quickly than with the uh, silver component. There is still a strong uh, upside exploration potential on the silver side. We also carry another 6.9 million tons in the inferred category, which we're certainly looking to do additional work and, uh, and supplement the pre-feasibility resource with uh, mine life expansion. It's important to note also that from a regulatory perspective, we're somewhat unique as far as mining operations in the uh, Western United States. We, can, we reside 100% uh, on private land and 100% on patented mining claims. And that results in a much, uh, a, a, a much uh, more clear and concise uh, permitting and, and regulatory environment. Our regulatory authority is solely with the uh, state of Idaho, which makes us, which allows us to not be involved in the uh, federal NEPA permitting process, which is why we're we have been able to advance this project from uh, where we were in April 2020, which was essentially a standstill, to the point where we are now, where we're on the cusp of, of uh, building the mine and going into production at the end of 2023. As I mentioned, it is a zinc dominant resource. But that's not such a bad place to be. It certainly uh, uh, has, has uh, performed well and is, uh, is a key component of a low energy, uh, low carbon energy transition that we, see, uh, that we see as an important player in the metal space going forward. As well, silver you know, sits in that unique space where with industrial demand and a uh, precious component as well. Relatively low capex intensity. Uh, comparatively speaking to some other uh, similar type projects. And pre-feasibility economics, um, we published our pre-feasibility about a month and a half ago, and you can see here, it's a robust project economics and a fairly modest capex uh, for restart. Uh, a modest mine life based on the measured and indicated material, uh, but certainly potential to expand with resource conversion and uh, exploration. Just a bit of a look at the, uh, the mine plan. The historic mine is extensive. We have significant uh, and extensive records of, of the historical mining. We've been able to digitize all those records and uh, validate with on-site um, on investigation and, and survey checks on the, water, on the area that's above the water level, which is on the 11 level. And that re represents roughly the first three to five years worth of mining. We're active in the mine right now, doing the pre preliminary development. And, uh, and things are looking really quite robust uh, from an underground perspective. On surface, uh, one of the key milestones that we were able to achieve this last year was the acquisition of a uh, processing plant. Uh, we acquired the uh, processing plant from Tech Resources and the Ponderay mine. And through the summer months, we demobilized that processing plant and relocated it to where it stands, sits now which is on the yard at the uh, Bunker Hill mine site in, in Kellogg, Idaho. And we are, uh, are, have initiated and we're starting the process of doing a bit of demolition of existing infrastructure at site, preparing for the uh, civil and, um, and foundation work that will be ongoing through the winter months. Also starting to build our team. You know, a couple of other key team members that uh, you know, I just wanna mention, Tom Francis, our general manager, uh, he was, comes to us from Rio Tinto, and uh, although he's not listed on here, Mike Eislin, our, our processing manager, uh, has, a, you know, has a strong track record of uh, both building and operating uh, processing plants. Uh, the metallurgy at Bunker Hill is a pretty straightforward differential flotation, uh, generating a low silver zinc concentrate and a high grade uh, lead concentrate. Project timeline. 
Uh, we're on track and on budget at this point, and looking and certainly uh, are confident that we're going to stay on track and on budget. And we're looking for a mill commissioning Q3, Q4 next year. On the financing side, uh, the <clears throat> we've our, our primary financing partners brought royalty and streaming, and we expect uh, you know over the uh, over the next few weeks to a, a month, month and a half is that we'll be in a position where the final piece of the Sprott financing package will uh, be released. And, and at that point, you know, that'll be a significant catalyst to allow us to accelerate the development on site. From an exploration and upside potential standpoint, Bunker Hill was the largest mine in the Silver Valley, uh, but it was also the shallowest of all the major mines in the Silver Valley. Uh, the, uh, the, um, you know, the, the mine, was uh, never really needed to explore uh, below the shaft bottom. Um, you know, they, they were always able to replace reserves over that 100-year 100 operating, 100 operating life using the existing and initial uh, vertical development and, and shaft infrastructure. Um, despite that, what we do see is that there is, a, you know, there is significant silver potential, certainly at depth, um, but the rapid restart focusing on the more zinc-dominant mineralization allows us to get into a uh, free cash flow generating uh, position quite quickly and then use that cash flow to reinvest in further uh, rehabilitation and exploration within the mine footprint. But we do also control a fairly large footprint uh, around the historical mine footprint. So you can see in purple here, that's the existing mine footprint and the uh, teal color represents the full claim package. Again, all patented mining claims, private land. And last year we did a geophysical survey and uh, identified a couple of really interesting geophysical uh, anomalies. Uh, certainly worth following up on, uh, but again, at the moment our focus is building the mine and uh, getting into a position where we're generating free cash flow. We also have begun to uh, work on our uh, development pipeline so we have entered into a joint venture um, with a, a partner in Colorado on a project that has some similarities. Again, patented mining claims, private land, um, and in this particular case, more of a precious uh, metal focus, 650,000 ounce historic producer um, with significant upside potential on unexplored strike length. And really, you know, when we when we look at uh, where we've come, you know, in since April of 2020, uh, you know, we've really breathed, breathed life into what was a dormant company. Uh, we've published now three uh, 43101 compliant resources, the most recent with a significant increase in the measured and indicated materials. We've done two PEAs uh, and published a, a most recently a pre-feasibility. We've, uh, we've uh, acquired financing for the bulk of the financing required for restart. Uh, begun to build a, uh, a development pipeline and have had some significant operational and, and execution successes with uh, the de demobiliz acquisition, demobilization of the uh, Ponderé mill uh, ahead of schedule and under budget. Looking forward uh, to uh, milestones coming up, you know, you're going to see the uh, disbursement of the stream as a milestone uh, coming up, uh, reaching a, a formal construction decision. Uh, we're looking to upgrade to the TSXV. And then uh, we'll be reporting on a regular basis. We actually started this a few months ago where we uh, report on a monthly basis, uh, project updates and uh, project advancement, uh, all culminating in a uh, operational restart in uh, Q3, Q4 of next year. Great, any questions? On Bunker Hill? No, that's it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much.